So the only archaeological evidence that has been presented that makes any sense whatsoever is the Jesus family tomb. And this isn't the first piece of evidence that has been presented before the church would say, this is the cross that Jesus was hung on. Then they would have the nails that Jesus was nailed to. And they used to show all these artifacts and people would believe them, but they don't show them anymore because clearly they were lying, you know, that's a bunch of horse shit. Um, but there was the Jesus family tomb. They'd actually come up with several names on these bone boxes, these uh, ossuaries. They excavated the tomb. They pulled out these bone boxes, and they found names that are written on them that are a statistical slam dunk, that it has to be Jesus' tomb. There was Jesus, the son of Joseph. There was James. That's another one that eventually the chemical analysis said it was from the same soil, but it wasn't found together with all the rest. James is Jesus' brother, but the ones that were all found together, clustered together, uh, was Jesus, son of Joseph. I mean, that's pretty remarkable right there, right? If you found an old archaeological bone box that said Jesus, son of Joseph, and it's 2,000 years old, you probably say, well, I found it. <laughs> Jesus, son of Joseph, okay, there it is. Well, it wasn't really the son of Joseph. Wasn't he the son of God? Wait a second. Maybe he wasn't a stepfather. Maybe he was his real daddy. It's what... Uh, one of the passages say they mark the bloodlines all the way back to David, and they go through Joseph. The other names they found was Maria, Joseph, Mary, Yosi, Matthew, and Judah, son of Jesus. So Mary, Joseph, another Mary, so his mother, his wife, his father, Yosi, Matthew, and Judah. Those were the names that they had all found. And so who are these people, you know, like uh, what, Jesus had a son? There's three names there that are remarkable. Um, Mary was there, and so that's, you know, there's two Marys. Actually, 25% of all the women in Jerusalem were named Miriam. So everybody was named Mary back then. But there's one that says Maria and one that's Mary. And they're saying that one is his mother and the other one is his wife. And the other, Joseph is his dad. But who is Yosi and who is Matthew? And Judah, the son of Jesus? I don't remember reading about Judah. I don't remember being talked to by a Catholic priest about Judah. Who is this Judah? And, you know, this is archaeological evidence. This is statistical slam dunk. If you get rid of this evidence, you got nothing. You got nothing. You got a bunch of a book, a compromised book, which has been thoroughly discredited, translated many times by a lot of biased people. The Romans killed Jesus, then the Romans adopted Christianity. I mean, you don't think that they would change some of the translations? The man who found the Jesus family tomb was Simcha Jacovici, Vici, Jacovici. So Simcha Jacovici, they was ask, well, who's this Judah, son of Jesus, right? I mean, we recognize Mary, Joseph, Mary, and Jesus, and maybe Matthew, and Yosi is like uh, Joseph Jr. It's like a small form of Joseph, Yosi, Y-O-S-E. But who is this Judah? And he actually points to three uh, mysterious passages in the Bible. Three mysterious passages. There was one at the Last Supper. There's somebody cuddling up to Jesus, asking who the person is going to betray Jesus. Who is this person? And he's cuddling. Well, who would cuddle with Jesus? And it's an unnamed dis disciple. And then you have uh, Jesus at the crucifixion. He says, uh, Behold, mother, thy son. So he's looking at... He's getting crucified. He says, Mother, behold thy son. And Mary Magdalene was there, and they just kind of skip right on over that. But he, the uh, uh, Simcha Jacobovici is saying that he was actually telling Mary Magdalene, this is your son, you know, this is your son. And then they tell, he tells the son to take care of her for the rest of her, her days. And again, that was also in John, and it only said the unknown disciple. They don't name who the disciple is. So that looks like that was a black line, right? Whenever there's classified documents by the presidents, they always black it out. And then the other uh, piece of evidence was that there was a guy who was naked running through Jerusalem in his pajamas when he was arrested. So those were three mysterious passages that says could be Jesus' son. And so I was going to read the three passages. So in Mark so Mark chapter 14, verse 43, the betrayal and arrest of Jesus. 
Then while he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with him, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. At this they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest to serve it, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out against a robber with swords and clubs to seize little old me? Day after day I was with you teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he all left him and fled. So all the apostles took off, right? There was one person, one of the bystanders. A bystander drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, cut off his ear. But then eventually Jesus was like, hey, this fulfills the, the scriptures. And so they fled, except for a young man. Now a young man followed him wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. And who is this guy? Who is this guy? You know, where, was he just some random guy that was woken up by the commotion, comes out and was, you know, uh, it just said that he followed him and he was wearing nothing but a linen cloth. And then I guess they, they seized him or they grabbed a hold of him, but he left the cloth behind and just ran away naked. Well, who is this naked person? Who is this naked person running through Jerusalem? Well, according to Simcha Jacobovici, it could be Judah. It could be it have been Jesus' son from Mark. Now, this comes from uh, this next passage comes from John chapter thirteen, verse twenty-one. Uh, the announcement of Judas's betrayal. When he had said this, Jesus was deeply troubled and testified, Amen, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another at a loss as to whom he meant. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining at Jesus' side. So Simon and Peter nodded to him to find out whom he meant. He leaned back against Jesus' chest and said to him, Master, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one whom I hand the morsel after I have dipped it. So he dipped the morsel and he took it and handed it to Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot. After he took the morsel, Satan entered him. So Jesus said to him, What are you going to do? Do quickly. Well, you're not sure how they knew Satan entered uh, Judas when it had happened. But after he took the morsel, and it says the morsel is probably the bitter herb, a bitter herb dipped in salt water in the notes. Uh, after he took the morsel, Satan entered him, so Jesus said to him, What you are going to do, do quickly. Now, none of those reclining at the table realized why he said this to him. Some thought that since Judas kept the money bag, Jesus had told him, Buy what we need for the feast or to give something to the poor. So he took the morsel and left at once, and it was night. So this is kind of crazy. You know, we just read about him coming back, and he goes up and he kisses Jesus, and then they all arrest him after he had been kissed, right, the kiss of death. But Jesus knew who was going to betray him, and he gives this morsel clearly in front of everybody, and then they're like, oh, we misheard him. That seems pretty dramatic. One of you all are going to fuck me over. Whoever I give this the little you know, piece of uh, herb to is the one who's going to... They all just play dumb. It was like, oh, did he give him money to get more food for the feast? Is that what this was? Or maybe he just gave him the morsel to give to the poor? <laughs> No, that's not what he declared. It's not what he said out loud. But the important part in this passage is this disciple. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved. There's only 12 disciples, but by saying this, the one whom Jesus loved, but it doesn't say who his name is, it leaves it very, very mysterious. And he says that he was reclining at Jesus' side. So Simon Peter nodded to him to find out what he meant. Then he leaned back against Jesus' chest and said to him, Master, who is it? So this a disciple whom Jesus loved leans against Jesus' chest. The, uh, the Bible here uh, online said that it was a bosom, chest, bosom, kind of same thing, right? But who is this? Who is this guy that's cuddling with Jesus? Is this one of the men? Is this, uh, I'll read it again just because it's important. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining at Jesus' side. It's got a note over here. It says, the one whom Jesus loved, also mentioned in John 19, 26, 22, 21, 7. 
a disciple called another disciple or the other disciple. It was mentioned in John 18, 15 and John 22. In the latter reference, he is identified with the disciple whom Jesus loved. There's also an unnamed disciple in John 1, 35 to 40. See the note on John 1, 37. So this, uh, according to Simcha Jacobovici, uh, he is saying that he only cuddles with his kids. So therefore, this must be Jesus' son. This is Judah. We're, we're talking about Judah right here. This is an unnamed disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. It seems very, why, you know, why write it like that? That seems very ambiguous. It seems very mysterious. Why not just say who it was? It just says, it has been suggested since, essentially, the biblical story is Jesus stays single his entire life, but rabbis were known to have wives. So why did Jesus not have a wife? Why didn't he have a wife? He'd been preaching all these years, never had a wife. Well, maybe he was gay. So it was speculated that he was gay or he had a secret wife that, you know, nobody ever talked about. Now, this would go towards the gay thing. He's got this man, this disciple, who's reclining at Jesus' side, who's lying on his chest, lying on his bosom. Jesus, who's going to betray you? Who's going to do that, lying on his bosom? That's either, you know, it's either his gay lover or a very friendly friend of his or a son, you know, and that's what uh, Simcha... Simcha Jacobovici says that it is. He thinks that that is his son. So there is some text that justifies Judah. The uh, last piece of evidence that Simcha Jacobovici mentions is in John chapter 19, and it's verse 25 to 27. So this is the crucifixion of Jesus. And so I guess he's, let's see, he was hung up and he's dying. Um, when the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, one share for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top down. So they said to one another, let's not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it will be in order that the passage of Scripture might be fulfilled. That says, they divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did, because it's what the Scriptures had said. So now 25, John 19, 25. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister. Mary, the one standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister. Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. So again, Mary Magdalene's there. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, again, that same phrase, the disciple whom he loved, he said to his mother, woman, Behold, your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold, your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. So this is incredible. Okay, He says to his mother, Woman, behold your son. <laughs> Which is weird. Why would you call your mother woman? Why wouldn't you be like, Hey, mom. Hey, moms. Yo, moms, what's up? But he goes, Woman. <laughs> and, and Mary Magdala was there too. So perhaps he was saying it to Mary Magdala, Woman. Behold your son. So he was pointing out to Mary Magdalene, son. Again, we hear that this is the disciple there whom Jesus loved, not named at all. And he said that when he saw his mother and the disciple who he loved, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. So that could mean that he actually told his mother, this is your son, which would be some weird ancestral relationship. It, perhaps later I heard some explanations saying that he told one of his disciples to take care of his mother like if it was his real mother, which, I don't know, that might be true too. Um, but the uh, Jacobo Vici is suggesting that he was talking to Mary Magdalene, and he was saying, woman, behold your son. This is your, look, I'm dying, this is it, so this is your kid. And then the son, Judah, is going to take care of the mother. So he was saying to Mary, this is your son. To the son, this is your mother. And then from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. So those would be the three passages. So that would be the three passages that straight out of the Bible, straight from the text, that uh, suggest that you know there's other people, there's other players involved in Jesus' life and crucifixion, uh, possibly his son, possibly Judah. So you know, we've answered who Judah, maybe he's had a son, but there's other names. Who's Yosi? Is there a Joseph Jr., another Joseph? And who's Matthew? Like Matthew, is that like the book of Matthew, Matthew? Who's Matthew? 
but that wasn't like in his crew or in his clique. Maybe it was. Why was Matthew buried with all the rest? So those are just sort of some of the outliers. But statistically, it's a slam dunk. This is the Jesus family tomb, and that's Judah, the son of Jesus. That's the biblical text uh, explanation or evidence for Judah, the son of Jesus, being in the Bible.